and welcome to Champ Select, your go-to competitive Legends of Runeterra podcast. I'm Alex, as per usual, joining me are my two co-hosts, Noble. Burble. Hello, and Hugh. Uh, hi. hi. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. It was, it's all I'm thinking about, it's man. It's all you could think about? All right, so in case you didn't get the, uh, get the memo here from Noble, in this episode, we... I mean, we just have to do it. We have to sit down. We got to talk about Mr. Wiggly Burblefish. All hail the Holy Burble. All hail the Holy Burblefish. And it's basically feed Alex the words okay, that exited his okay. mouth last gonna, episode. <laughs> look, people do put bad. There are bad cards. That card, that deck is full of bad cards. I stand Don't by worry. it. There's so many bad cards in the deck. Oh, anyway. no, no, you're right. You're right. So you're right. Gonna, but we're going to cover exactly why it's a pile. How wrong he was and what made him so wrong and all of us wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a weird deck, and so for the, for those of you that that maybe uh, were unaware or haven't missed it, it's it's been a pretty big meme in our Discord for the last week about the the Wiggly Burblefish, and it just like like literally the day we recorded that episode, like this T TF Fizz deck and the TF Ezreal Burblefish decks just like exploded. They were yep. everyone was playing them. They're like, this is the best deck. It's new. It's the it's the nuts. And this was like the day we recorded our like mid mid set like tier list basically, yeah. and then like the same day, it just exploded. So obviously the meta has been shaken up a lot just yeah. in in the last week. This new Burblefish deck exists. There's a lot of Burblefish variations floating around. A lot of people are trying to optimize the lists. We've been playing it a lot. Yeah, uh, the, the three of us, along with you, know, we've got, heard a bunch of things from other people. So I think we want to spend some time breaking down the Burblefish, breaking down the Burblefish deck, and talking about why why is it just now arriving into the meta? Why did it take it this long? Uh, what are our feelings on the deck? Do we think that these are the best Burblefish decks, or are they still evolving? Stuff like that. And I think that we should just uh, start right from the ground up with Noble and just go into Okay, what does this actual deck look like if you haven't seen it yet? Okay, so first I want to give a little bit of context. Um, we had our meta episode last week, um, and then right in the past week, uh, we've had some other meta information come out. Um, and this is still pre burble but I want to set the stage a little bit. So we had Perfect. a meta review, some, some actual data um, come out from uh, uh, on, I don't know, it, it's an article that gets written like basically halfway through patches. Quite often, um, and this meta review showed that about fourteen percent of the meta was Draven Ezreal on ladder. Twelve percent was Lee Sin Zoe. Uh, Eight percent was Plaza Scouts. Seven percent was Discard Aggro. Six percent was Fiora Shen. Uh, Six percent was Hecarim Plaza. Five percent was TF Swain. Five percent was Ash Midrange, and four percent was Pirate Burn. Um, and this is on January twenty fifth, which was not that long ago. What day it, is it? I mean, it's January twenty sixth today. Yeah. So this data is coming before the meteoric rise of Burble in the last yeah, week. Yeah, it was probably like it was probably taken like just before. Yeah, I mean it's probably taking that data, data into account, but and it just kind of is lumped into the other currently. Yeah. Um, so you know this actually lines up, I think, pretty closely with the meta we talked about. Um, if we replace Draven Ezreal with Draven Swain, which we said was basically the it's same deck, but we think is yeah. better, and it's possible that you know the community is right and Draven Ezreal is better and it's also po possible that people just haven't tried Draven Swain yet. It was, a little, it was a little surprising to me that Draven Ezreal was the most played deck uh, on that list, but it's it's not that surprising. It, it's just such a good mid-range deck and it just feels good to play. Yep. You know, it, it just reminds me, it just feels like a deck that it has a in lot of general, play in all yeah, in general, the card game population is going to gravitate towards that type of deck. So it's not all that surprising to me that that's the most played deck. Yeah. So, and if, uh, and then on region pop prop popularity, um, Noxus is the most popular at 16%, then Targon at 15, Demacia at 14, and then Bilgewater at 12, uh, Piltover at 14, and then nine, uh, 11, 9, 8 for Shadow Isles, Freljord, and Ionia, respectively. Very healthy. Yeah, so uh, the, the me meta is very healthy, especially before the rise of the Burble. Um, and honestly, I think it's really cool. I think we'll talk about this a little later with some u listener questions. But then a new deck can pop up in the meta and totally take the meta by storm in my opinion and no new cards got released yeah nothing just, new happened people just figured out what to do with burble fish absolutely so of note the one catalyst that i think could have sparked it was the go hard nerf 
Oh, that's that fair, was yeah, the yeah. only change that happened, and it wasn't immediate, right? It wasn't go hard nerf, nerf, bang, this is the best deck. Yeah. It took about a week, maybe two yeah. or so. My guess is people were not having success before because everyone was afraid of go hard, and Wiggly Burble Burf- 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 Fish does not line up well against either go hard or pack your bags. Yeah, or like TF Red Card or any of that. So, yeah. like, perhaps it was that people were really scared of TF mm-hmm. Go Hard, and it was prevalent, and even if the matchup wasn't really all that different back then, you know just just if you just look at the deck list and you're like this is our plan and then you're like okay but like go hard exists you're like yeah okay i'm probably off it already yeah. you know the deck is the next plan is x1 elusive creatures right so yeah. like just just literally looking at the deck without even playing a game i think most people would all be like this deck must get absolutely annihilated by twisted yeah, fate totally. right and i don't think that's entirely actually well, fair I actually think that the the elusive burble fish deck or this burble fish deck essentially actually has quite a bit more play against TF Go Hard than you would think on paper, yeah. but I, I do think you would have to play. I it. have not lost to the current iterations of Go Hard yeah, with I, a burble fish. Deck. Yeah, I think you would have to actually play it to realize that, and I think a lot of people probably didn't take the didn't play the like enough games yeah. early on to realize that that's probably actually yeah. slightly favored though the pack your bags with nerf is certainly significant because okay. you're trying to kill them so quickly and i i doubt that the deck would really ever be to resolve pack your bags yeah. so okay so um right after our episode recorded i w- i um saw um one of the top na players that you know i respect and who's lee zoe we were list we were tinkering with um austin yost talk about uh this deck and that he was having a lot of success with this deck and then i checked the top 10 masters and there was also an ezreal version so um all burble fish decks currently uh play twisted fate and burble fish is kind of that's that's the the first thing that they all have in common yeah three twisted fate three burble fish yep. is, is the is step one to building your holy burble pile yeah so um i kind of set out to figure out which of these burble fish decks was the best because there was twisted fate fizz there was twisted fate uh draven which doesn't even play piltoverns on uh there was twisted fate ezreal there was a twisted fate gangplank list that i saw from someone on our discord there were the twisted fate elise decks there were a lot of different burble there's piles. ones with zoe yeah there's, there's a lot of yeah. zoe burble fish decks so um i kind of set out to figure out which one of those was the best um i still plan on releasing the article of me playing 10 games with all like five different twisted fate versions but just currently I'm about halfway through, um, and I think it's kind of settled in that time that Twisted Fate Fizz is the best de- is the best version. So this is the I'm just gonna say the like most streamlined version of the deck because the Ezreal version has to place ways to level up Ezreal. The Draven version is kind of a whole different deck. The Shadow Isles version is a whole different deck, and the Gangplank version is playing weird things to level up Gangplank. So kind of this is the yeah, most it, on plan just tf burble fish i think that most people have have settled that twisted fate fizz three of both of them and then the wiggly burble fish so it's it's twisted fate fizz are your champions you're playing three of each you're playing Bilgewater and piltover and Zon. yeah i think that that has become this the standard list and I, you guys have played a lot of games with this deck so in general hugh why don't, why don't you just talk to us about why the deck is powerful in the abstract because i think that it's actually like a big problem that i have with with the deck or really had before i got to play it was if you just look at the cards it's like i would like if i had this exact deck in expedition i would like i would i would play it because i wanted to see if i could do it but it feels like the type of deck where you're like this is a bad arena deck. Like yeah. it looks like a bad draft deck. Yeah, like, like, coral creatures. Yeah, you're like I had a bunch of coral creatures. These worthless parlays. Like yeah. a card. There's so many just like there's so many cards that everyone wrote off. Not everyone, I suppose, but there's so many cards that most people have written off as like kind of just bad that just found a home in this deck. Why? Why does it work? So I thought about this particular topic a lot because one. Alex in particular, but all of us last episode just totally. No, it's like, me in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I really had a problem yeah, with a you, lot you of You really had a problem with a lot of this. And um, I, I, that problem has not been fully resolved, and we'll get to that later. But, yeah, but go and ahead here. So <laughs> basically, Alex tore all these cards a new one. Um, <laughs> and somewhat rightfully so. Like, let's let's take, a, like, just, you know, parlay. Like, that. it's one mana. It's, it's a slow. bad card. It's not a, it's not a particularly good card. Like, basically, there's a ton of cards in this deck that. You look at just that card in a vacuum, face value. It's like this card is n- is not very good. It's not very powerful, yeah. and this entire deck, for the most part, is filled with those kinds of cards 
and other cards that make those cards. So like Coral Creatures makes a one-cost spell. Burblefish makes a one-cost spell. Zap Sprayfin draws a three or less co- less cost spell. Yeah. Um, They're all putting more copies of those random cards that aren't particularly exactly. good, like Poro Cannon into your hand. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Ballistic Bot hand. makes Ignition, a, another one cost spell. Um, that doesn't really it's not good. You don't. Yeah, you would not put that card. Yeah, you would not. You would not just be like so fire strictly off three parley in every way and also not yeah. that good. So I so thought strictly a lot, warning shot. I thought all, so. I, I I was skeptical about the deck as well. I saw the list and I was like, "How is this good?" It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I need to figure this out. It looks like an absolute pile. Yeah. yeah the it, decks, it just, they just look, the cards themselves, like, when I've played against these decks on ladder in the past, and they used to be way more niche and admittedly took way more liberties with the cards they were putting in their deck back then. Now, yeah. now that it's been a little bit reined in, it's gotten a lot better and more consistent. But, like, oh man, when I would queue into this wig, guy playing Wiggly Burble Fish in Platinum. You You'd know, be thrilled. In Platinum 4-0 LP, I'd be like, yeah, this is about right. Look at this idiot casting pick a card. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. you'd just like, you know, cast Lee Sin and be like, okay, can you deal with it? <laughs> like, no, not at all. It's like, okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. You know, there, there were, I played a lot of games like that, which were really one-sided against the deck throughout the, like, course of Legends of Runeterra. Like, yeah. as soon as Wiggly Burblefish was released, like, this archetype has existed. existed in some form or another and not been good and they've been bad and yeah. a lot of the and i think it has a lot to do with the really bad versions of these decks people were playing and so like my when i saw the new burble fish version i was like it's probably You're still bad off of it but yeah. this this one's actually pretty good <laughs> i think this deck is incredibly strong and basically i needed to come up with some reason why because i was also struggling with the concept of like look at this pile of cards how is this good because i played a ton of <laughs> <laughs> this is like it's like here's our new tier one deck <laughs> how is this deck good at all <laughs> yeah so i queued up with it i just like i just copy and pasted the list from uh the guy who made it uh who was it again uh austin yost is one of the people who popularized it in na but right. i yeah, think i can't were... give you i can't I, give you yeah, a specific name i think sure. it's kind of an i actually do believe it started with a burble fish ezreal deck twisted fate ezreal uh, that I that I actually mentioned it in our meta review last week because yeah. I found it on the master's ladder just like seeing what the top yeah. twenty people were playing, um, and I actually think that that was the beginning of it. I'm sorry I don't remember that that person's sure, that's name. That's fine. But, Whatever. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I needed to try this out because I was like, okay. And then this I, is the most Hugh deck I've ever seen. Oh, it's so, <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's let Hugh finish this point. All right. Yeah. So we, oh, yeah, it's so Hugh. Where was I? Uh, okay. So I I queued up with this deck and I immediately just went ten and zero. Boom. Knew nothing about the deck, just st- straight into like I was started Diamond Three, sixty LP or something like yeah. or Diamond Four whatever. Uh, went ten and zero immediately in like an hour and a half, and I was like, oh my god, what just happened? <laughs> because that doesn't you don't just you don't just do that, um, especially when the deck is completely new to you. You've never played anything like it. It's weird. It's really really weird, and the play pattern is not something you're used to. You, you, you're supposed to lose a game to, like, being bad at the deck, and I sort of didn't. So, <laughs> I needed, I really needed, for the sake of my sanity, and Alex's sanity, mostly his, uh, to figure <laughs> my out... My sanity is a frail subject, Hugh. You better be... You better, yeah. we, this really better hit at home. So, I needed to figure out how why this deck was good. And I finally came up with a theory, and... Okay, basically... If you've seen, this is going to be a lot easier for you to grasp if you've seen the movie or heard of the movie Moneyball and know the concept at all. But if you haven't, I'll definitely make it. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll explain. We'll, a little we'll make bit it more easier later. to understand. You will be able to understand this even if you've not seen the movie. So basically, the the basic concept is in the, in the movie they they like lose a bunch of good players. It's about baseball. They lose a bunch of good players. They have no money. They need to rebuild a team out of all of these on of paper. All of these C tier expedition players. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For example. And they're like, how do we rebuild this baseball team or this Legends of Runeterra deck with no with with bad players or bad cards? This is a it just this started is, as a budget deck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like it's yeah. So what they did in the movie was basically they took all of these things, they broke all these players down. To pure statistics, they were like, we want to get this result. We want to get a person on first base 40% of the time. That's all we're looking for. Nothing else matters. So they took over three players. They looked at, like, this person gets on 
I don't know, 30% of the time, another one gets on. 50% of the time, another one gets on. 40% of the time. You average those three players out, they get on first base 40% of the time. So basically, what we have in this deck is we have a bunch of small one-cost cards that over the course of casting a bunch of these will add up to a more powerful effect. So let's take Noxian Fervor, for example. Noxian Fervor is one of, is like one of the better cards in Noxus. It's in a really region. good card. Yeah, it's a really powerful card. You love to play it in your deck. Yeah. Three mana, three damage. It has the downside of it usually kills one of your creatures. It's upside most of the time, honestly. Yeah, because it gets to kill something. It hits <laughs> yeah, life it steal. Just, it just ends up being upside a lot of the time. Yeah. Or not a downside piece you play it in response. Regardless, yeah, anyway, it's a good card. So, good card. We like putting that card in our deck. Now, let's look at Parlay. One mana, deals a damage to a creature, slow speed, and then sometimes hits their face. Yeah, it, it, it actually deals damage to anything, so you can point it directly at their face. Parlay. Wait, really? Yes. The card says deal one damage to anything. If if it, you, if a thing is killed this way, deal one to the face. Yeah. Okay. You've been playing this deck and you don't know that? Like I kill I people never with just, like up. a random parley to the face, like often. Okay. Well that's um that's uh good to know. Keep that in My <laughs> mind is reeling a little bit. Just uh give <laughs> yeah. me a moment. It's so okay. that it so that it can trigger plunder in, in your plunder deck without having to one cost creature hoop. All right. Well, we're gonna we'll we'll circle back to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so Noxian Fervor versus Parlay. Parlay is obviously in a vacuum, one to one, a lot worse. So much. You worse. need three cards to achieve the same result, and in a much worse way. Right. Exactly. So how does like how does that work? How do we get to play three Parlay? Well, it just it just it's just because it's like I think the deck actually just does. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, so, you just, so the you thing you need to realize is that you're not getting a card's worth of value out of every card. Yeah. But you're playing you're half getting again as many cards as your opponent. Point six yeah. value yeah. of a card every time you play a card, but you're just playing twice as many cards. Yeah, exactly. So basically, you're normally playing a thirty card deck or forty card deck. Sorry. Um, yeah. But this deck is closer to a sixty card deck because of all these cards that create cards. All these, all these small, seemingly "quote unquote" bad cards, and a lot of them are kind of bad. They're just very inconsequential most of the time. But when we're playing as many as we are, like we get to play. Let's just we'll go back to the example of Parlay. That's a good one. Um, and we'll once again go back to Noxian Fervor. So Noxian Fervor is one card, but it's also a lot like Noxian Fervor is just really three parlays in a trench coat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that actually, the like, I, I chose 0. 0.6 of a card kind of arbitrarily or entirely arbitrarily earlier, but I actually think that like, probably Parlay is like actually probably right about 0. 0.6 of Anaxian Fervor. It's like, by the time you cast two Parlays, if you got their ping effect to Nexus twice, like, you didn't have to shoot the three damage at one of your own things. Yep. You deal yeah. one less damage, but you dealt more damage if you count the Nexus damage as relevant sometimes. Sometimes you only need the one damage. It's probably like about, you probably end up with like 1.2-ish worth of cards if yeah. you can play, consistently play two parlays instead of one Noxious. Exactly, so, and that's a very narrow example. Um, yeah, so to summarize. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you are turning through your deck with cards like Pick a Card and Rummage that turn the cards that are absolutely useless, like the counterfeit copies created by your Coral Features or Burblefish, into actual cards. Even if those cards aren't as powerful, they are cheap, which means that you get to play a lot of them. So you get to a place where you're playing Pick a Card, drawing three extra cards in your next turn, all of which you get to play, some of which are random cheap spells, and some of which are Burble fishes and iterative improvements that let you play burble fish for two one zero mana and then iterative improvement for another two mana plus usually one or zero to play another four two that's making cards in your hand that you are continuing to turn through your deck with that allows you to have very high tempo turns where you turn out like 10 plus elusive power for like three or four mana yeah perfect so this i think actually is is the the first point that i wanted to make and that's that i think that you know, we or you guys more accurately had an episode on tempo while I was still out of town yeah. uh, a few weeks ago, and it was a really good tempo episode. And even after the episode got recorded, we like had a group chat where we were like, where we kind of didn't solidly fully agree on what amongst the is. three of us on what a real tempo deck in Legends of Runeterra is. I'm I'm willing to say that this is this is a very real Legends of Runeterra tempo deck. I think, and it it feels weird because a lot of the times with this like quote-unquote tempo deck you end up playing 
12 power for zero mana or like 12 power for very cheap with these free burgle fishes or whatever and just killing your opponent in one turn and that doesn't really feel like a tempo plan but that is kind of like a a, a definite plan a of a de of this deck but i think that that is just like a resultant of like you just like it almost feels like you're like banking this all of the tempo from playing all these cheap cards and then eventually it's like all right here's my really high tempo turn and yeah. you just blast them you yeah. just explode a massive uh, amount of power onto the board all elusive all at once yeah, for like two minutes yeah, yeah, sometimes and, it's and like a flipped twisted fate yeah, yeah those are your really no, high tempo turns too no deck in no tempo deck in any other card game i can think of would play the card pick a card that it's not a tempo card oh, but yeah, in no. this particular deck it combines with a synergy and i think that's an interesting way that legends of runeterra is different than a lot of games and maybe the concept of tempo is a little different in legends i think this is a high synergy tempo deck i would agree which yeah. I, I i'm not certain is really an archetype we're very familiar with in card games in general yeah i'm not i'm not really certain that, that that's a thing that exists when i think of magic the gathering or a hearthstone when i think of like tempo decks i do not think of high synergy i think of the most efficient card you can play for every cost and uh on an individual level on an individual well, level coupled with they're all cheap i actually disagree with that a little bit because i think one of the classic tempo decks in magic is mono is the mono blue flyers deck and it plays a bunch oh, of sure. one mana one ones with flying that you want to put like one mana enchantments that let you draw a card when they hit your opponent on them and though neither of those cards are good in a vacuum like that deck is the perfect example of you like play very cheap creatures and, and hold up counter spells and none of it looks good you're like none I, of the creatures i absolutely that love that example i've never thought about that example in relation to this deck and so i don't want to get into it too much because it, it calls to a magic the gathering deck but for any of our magic the gathering listeners i actually think this deck is a lot like that old mono blue tempo deck in standard yeah that won that pro tour with uh, with autumn burchette autumn burchette yeah. won that pro tour with mono blue tempo um if you're unfamiliar with magic we'll move on now but uh, i think that that's actually a really interesting yeah. Yeah. call so, so it's, it's a high synergy tempo deck that's looking to play j just like just play three times more or two or three times more cards than your opponent yeah i think and I you very frequently finish the game with like no relevant cards in hand you know like by the time you end the game yeah. it feels like you're like this is you know i've got four cards in my hand but they're all completely yeah. awful it's like, <laughs> like ten, i'm ten probably gonna lose power. If this doesn't get there 10 elusive power attack you and then play five plus points of burn from my hand and that ends the game and that's yeah and then yeah. you're out of relevant cards so i real quick want to talk about two other things about this deck i think one is that it's a twisted fate deck that is easily the most important i win so many games with twisted fate oh yeah transforming twisted fate with pick a card and rummage the fact that you can like twisted fate blue card after they like play a random unit like even against esdraven that has a lot of removal like i've had my opponent just like play a chump lump and then i like pay, play twisted fate blue card uh go to my next turn i've drawn a card for turn and then like my coral creatures or whatever has created a rummage and then i can just fire off three rummages in a row for three mana at burst phase that transforms my twisted fate on turn five and then i still get to th play three spells after it yes yeah, sometimes it's absolutely it's sometimes, sometimes it's nonsense when you yeah. transform twisted fate that's yeah. super interesting that you mentioned that because i have found that even though twisted fate is on paper very easy to transform in the deck i almost never flip twisted fate interesting when i play my games really yes twisted fate is usually um uh, maybe i'm just getting poor matchups but usually he just um, I, I play him and it's after my opponent has played something else because I'm like maybe they don't have the removal spell and they just seem to always have it And but then he's a card that generated you a card and, right and, and it's totally mana. fine yeah. it's totally fine if he just dies to a removal spell because you're almost always blue carding anyway yeah um it's very rare that you or or a yellow card that cleanly kills like another twisted fate or a fizz or or stops the one scout creature that they have yeah and when yeah. red card's good you know it exactly <laughs> when, when <laughs> whenever red card's the red good. card's good it's obviously exactly. very good yeah. And, and people are pretty good at playing yeah. around it. They don't. They, people don't really walk on a red card very much anymore. Yeah. That was a thing that happened a lot a little while ago when when Twisted Fate was newer, I think. But that doesn't. I, there's yeah. a lot of playing around TF so red card nowadays. I've found other analogies of good decks that we can think about is um, we've talked about both of these concepts directly on this podcast in previous episodes. But one is when we talk about the old Gohard deck. It is a very similar. Lots of crappy cards that end up in high tempo turns that used to be pack your bags, um, and also it was very. Um, we talked about how if your opponent plays a five drop creature and you trade it with three two twos in a row, but all of those two twos drew you a card, you're actually up a card. It's a very similar thing of like you're playing a two two for two that draws a card, you're playing a one one mana one two and that that draws a card. In this, you're playing like a coral creatures and a wiggly burble fish and 
casting a rummage and you know etc um and ending up up cards even while you're like chump blocking yeah if you i think if you took your average burble fish game and you just like wrote down all of the interactions on paper if you looked at each individual interaction separately you'd probably be like this was bad yeah. this is a bad trade this isn't good but when you add them all up you're like okay just like that five five with three two twos the draw card example right it's you it's like here's my three cards that i had to play to deal with this thing and it feels bad <laughs> like, like in the moment like a lot of time even in the game it feels bad and then you end up like looking down and it's turn six or turn eight or whatever and you've got four cards in your hand and your opponent has one and you're like what happened like i i spent four cards on that you and, know and random garen or whatever that, how did how did i get here actually yeah. that i think happens less with this deck than it did with the go hard deck and i think more often you look down and have played a bunch of things on your board and your opponent has no mana and so do you but you're massively ahead on board which is you know why this leans sort of tempo that is another that is another big one that the, happens a lot the other con concept is um thinking about as draven and thinking about someone some genius, some beautiful man who looked, or woman, that looked at the card Draven and was like, what if I do the work to make this card say, enters the battlefield and play and strike, or yeah, play and strike, draw a card. And it does a very similar thing with rummages and other ways to, and pick a card where it's trying to turn a bunch of nonsense cards into real cards. Um, so it's kind of like an intersection of those two yeah, things. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, and then I, I want to sum this up by just talking for like one minute about that meta report I said and kind of summarizing. We're going to talk more about Burblefish and the deck after this, but summarizing really poignantly why this deck kind of just took over. And it's that um, popular streamers, the Reddit community, the, uh, the um, Twitter community all have been talking recently about how powerful Targon is. The best decks were Targon decks. There were Scouts, but then there was like Lee Zoe and uh asol decks that were you know all all of these decks play targon um and the power of hush and this deck is really really good against targon decks this deck aims to play against a deck whose removal plan is hush and pale cascade instead of mystic shot so because it's so hard for them to ever beat twisted fate is a huge part of this deck's popularity and also when we're not playing against shadow isles when our opponents don't have uh, vile feasts and withering whales and avalanches that are very good against our playing a bunch of four two elusives and three one elusives uh you get a huge amount of mileage so i don't think this deck is i think it's meta warping right now i think it's defining i think you should be playing it if other people haven't caught up yet and it will win you a ton of games i also think that if people start playing decks like anifia people start putting the card with withering whale in their decks again people start playing other decks like that, even like stuff like Static Shock, which is not as good because it's so expensive for for doing so little. But um, there's clearly cards that are going to be good against this yeah, plan. They're, they're, they're just not getting played deck. right now. Yeah, and the, they're just the not thing. good right now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So after Noble's summary, I would like to take a moment to uh, to apologize to Mr. Burblefish. Uh, I think now is a good time. The deck is very good. Uh, I I was wrong, and I. Mr. Burblefish, I'm sorry to you. I've never had a problem with the card Wiggly Burblefish. I really, I think it's good. I've just been told, I've heard people tell me that it's this build, it's this payoff for playing all these cards. And my problem with these Burblefish decks have never been the Burblefish himself. I appreciate him for what he is, him and his wiggly nature. But man, coral creatures suck. That card sucks, man. <laughs> like, yeah. Can we like? Uh, how is that card good? Parlay? Are you kidding me? Like, it's like if you told me you put parlay. Yeah, if you told me you put parlay in your deck to deal with Zoe, it's like okay, sure, that's fine. And so like, actually, now there's three of them in every deck, and it's like okay, well they're here for Zoe, and they're here for the mirror now, and so sure, I guess. But like coral creatures, deck cards. Uh, okay. It's it's just, pool shark. It's so it makes a mana when you play it, <laughs> and then it creates the card up front, and it doesn't uh, go away. It's just pool shark. So. Another but it reason. makes a bad card instead of draws you a good card that you right. put in your deck. Right, but... I'm sorry. I hate Coral Creature. I'm, I know, I'm done. I know. I, I, Wiggly I, Burblefish has become immune. It's too good. It's ascended to God status. I can't touch it. So now yeah. I got to find a new guy to go pick on. Yeah. I'm coming after Coral Creatures. Why is Coral Creatures in this deck? So... It's so bad. Another... Okay. And here's... And that is <laughs> actually a good... so bad. That's a good uh, segue into another reason I think this deck is good. So we already mentioned that because we're playing so many extra cards on average than the typical deck, they average out to roughly a single card's more powerful effect. 
Um, another reason that I think this deck works out so well is because think about how much better Noxian Fervor would be if it said instead of deal three damage to one thing, you could also deal one damage to three things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just better. That's just right? The versatility. The yeah. versatility is great. A lot of versatility. And yeah. when we're breaking down this single effect into a bunch of smaller effects to achieve the same end, uh, once again, the example of three parlays instead of an Oxy and Fervor, we get that sort of versatility that yeah. we didn't have before. It makes Fizz better because it's more spells for Fizz. It makes Ezreal better because it's more targets for Ezreal, and it makes Gangplank better because it's damaging over more more different turns. Exactly. So it works way better with all these champions. And also too. there's definitely plenty of situations where you're like, okay, they have two creatures that have two health left and one that has one health left, and I just have one Noxian Fervor. I wish I could deal three damage to something and kill it from three. This feels bad to shoot any one of these creatures with, but I need to kill one of them, so I'm going to use this spell on one of their creatures. Yeah. With this deck, very frequently, you get to get the maximum amount of mileage about out of every single one of these cards as you possibly can because of how small and relatively inconsequential each individual effect is. Because when you get to pick one mana at a time what to do with each of these, you get to make... You get to these, be so efficient get, with every single mana. Exactly. So all of a sudden, like, you never, ever want to put Ye Be Warned in your deck. But sometimes... When you get it. When you get it, sometimes it is exactly what you want. I've had, it, I've had it, like, steal an elusive blocker that my Twisted Fate ate, and then that let me flip my Twisted Fate on the next turn with a rummage because it drew the card, and it was just, like, perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes... And, Sometimes it just lines up really well. There, there are draws. This again is another one of those decks that feels like sometimes where it's just like, how would I ever have won this game? Whereas you know, on turn four they play two, two Wiggly Burblefish and then Iterative Improvement and play a third one and it's all free and it's like I could never win. Or the turns, the games where they flip Twisted Fate on turn five and you just don't have a removal spell. You're like, I can never win, right? Yeah, like yeah. this deck is a, is a culprit of of those draws. Your especially vengeance is too slow to kill my transforming four mana of the, champion. The, the cards people were playing are playing in their decks right now. It's really taking advantage of the fact that people are not playing Avalanche. You know, there aren't really very many Freljord decks that are running around. They're kind of they've kind of fallen off. There's not really many people playing Go Hard anymore, right? And the card Go Hard is still good against this deck, but the rest of the deck is really not. And it also has a really I found has a really good matchup into Feel the Rush. It's just oh, yeah, yeah. Like the matchup is still great. Because yeah, and that you're deck's just, just too slow even exactly. with Avalanche, right? <laughs> like yeah. so I do think it is it is it is decent against this deck, but um I also think that it's important to note that this deck is at least, I think, favored against Zoe Lee. I haven't played the particular matchup enough, but the combination of being able to parley their Zoe's sometimes, the combination of being able to just, like, trade it with a Fizz when you have the attack token. Yeah, sometimes you can just play Poro Cannon and play and just, the 1-1 like, one, one elusive. Yeah, um, so it's pretty good at stopping Zoe uh, and Lee and often too late. The deck has a trouble dealing, actually dealing with Lee Sin, but that's fine because you can hopefully kill them through it. I've noticed that the... It, so I've played the matchup a couple times from both sides. My real quick Reader's Digest version is uh, neither neither ch neither person's one mana champion really matters. Like Zoe doesn't matter, Fizz doesn't matter. Yep. How dare well, you? Both of them matter. Both of the champions that matter are Twisted Fate and Lee Sin. Yep. Neither of which the other deck can really deal with. So yes, this the, makes sense. if you can kill them with Lee Sin, you're you're going to be able to. They they are not going to kill your Lee Sin. It's never going to happen. But if you can flip like, a Twisted Fate and then just gold card it every turn, they also can't kill you. So, because they can't kill you with Lee Sin and you're But gonna win also, eventually. the Lee Sin just, like, challenging a unit on turn five or six and then killing you on seven or eight is too slow. A lot of the time. So, you need to slow. be able to flip the Twisted Fate, which is hard. And then they also have, you know, they're really good at killing Mentor of the Stones. I just realized that I have played this matchup a lot. Yeah, so and have I. I have never had the Zoe Lee player put a sparkle fly into play. Like I just had that realization in my head. It has oh, literally yeah, that never one happened. Good. That yeah, one is sparkle good. fly is very good That's against the this next, deck. And I yeah. just realized that is that, the like, next point I was about to make is that like Zoe is not your plan. Sparkle fly and Lee Sin are your plan. Yeah. For sure. Um and also the deck still can totally beat both of those cards. Yeah. And I deny and notify are not good against your deck, which is huge. Very yes. important. Yeah. Deny no because you have so many burst cards. Deny is good against 
gold card when you're trying to like use a twisted fate <laughs> yes. casting three spells that is flipped to deal with their flipped lease in but like yeah I, no it doesn't whatever it doesn't it can come up there. it can anyway, come up <laughs> um deny and nobify are both really bad when all your cards are either burst or one cost slow spells and garbage yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's either burst and or garbage, garbage. Yeah. yeah it's like i'm not i'm not gonna the the thing about nopify is that it's cheap and it usually trades up on mana and you know counters yeah. the thing and the thing this thing about nopify is like i guess i'm nopifying this parlay Ugh. yeah yeah you know? we keep coming it's back like, to parlay that's finally got a card yeah like, finally got a card worth of value it's honestly probably the best one cost spell in the deck right rummage Rummage, rummage is oh, easily so, rummage, right, is, rummage. rummage is perhaps but, the best card in the deck. Oh yeah. I think it's pick a card not, personally, but um yeah. Oh, <laughs> not pick a card. Not no, pick think, a card, man. Um it's not that one. That I mean, card obviously sucks. Twisted fate. Um, and I, I want to real quick iterate why exactly Fizz is the choice. He's pressure early when you can play him, start hitting with him, and you can just like make him elusive very easily in this deck, and he just is gonna keep getting in. And then also he has the same level up contest condition of your third champion which is wiggly burble fish um and so on the turns where you're like one or zero mana burble fish iterative improvement burble fish that was like three mana and you can sneak in a fizz and then it's it's just another basically another copy of burble fish a lot of the times the chum the water just does nothing but it's it's one game, one <laughs> hard to disagree chum the water has won me several games okay that's fair i mean it, it's won me a game or two it's but like it comes up it, it's more niche than Sure, sure. Then I wish niche. it was. I, I read Fizz the first time, and I thought that Chum the Waters would be quite good. I'm like, oh, it like eats a thing and makes a 5-2 that eats it and maybe does some dip damage. <laughs> I thought that that effect would be like quite good. I, I actually thought that when I read Fizz that I was like, I might just put Chum the Waters in my deck. Like This card might just be good. It's, uh, it turns I, out to be much clunkier than that. So the real and reason it's far more niche, that, I think. Uh, I don't think Chum the Waters is very good is because when I hit my opponent with a level up Fizz, they always die. <laughs> yeah and i have because it I, makes it after combat so the vulnerable is not going to do anything till two turns later that was the so, problem yeah, I've had yeah exactly and that is true but i have also i think i don't know how many games i've played on this deck i think i've played like 40 or 50 at this point um a lot of the time you can games can go really long with this deck so. i was shocked with this deck's ability to play longer games and i, I think had... that this is probably why hugh he was he's quick reaction was pick a card because pick a card is definitely the card that lets you play the late game yeah it's really really crazy it's, actually. it's quite good at that effect and so th this is the the thing that pick a card does good is really good top deck like really good in the late game it's going to turn your you know your worst card plus this card into three new cards next turn yeah and if that's not too late and you can cast them all the card is really good really quickly in this deck if you're going into the mid and late game and you have our low on cards in hand and your coral creatures or your wiggly burble fish makes a random card even if that random card is decent i often just don't cast it because i really want it in my hand for a rummage or a pick oh yeah yep you really do need agree to, you really do need to be be mindful about that so i i have played so i have played or coached someone through about uh 30 games in this deck i personally in 13 and 8 but when i was uh playing with a person from our discord um last night we went like 10 and 1 um so and then combined with hugh's record that's a very good win rate yeah let's be clear um, we we think this deck is very good right now yeah and you should my win rate play is it. almost exactly 66 percent yeah you should probably play it at least try it if you can if you have the ability to do so i would certainly try it at least it's very very potent at what it does i'm very curious to see if this deck survives the like next meta shift of people oh, trying to I attack it and i do want to kind of touch on where we go from here uh, after Noble makes this point. Yeah, uh, I wanted to say, Aphelios comes out in two days. I believe it comes out on Thursday, right? Oh, does it? No, I thought it was next week. Uh, Might be next week. Someone Thursday. in our Discord said comes out in two days. I'm not sure if they were right. Um, someone should look it up on their phone right now so we can talk uh, about it. Uh, yeah, um, someone should. You know. Yeah, we'll look, we'll look it up. Um, there is a that in a balance patch. Um, they load balance patches uh, two weeks in advance. It is very likely that Targon gets nerfed and this deck does not get touched at all because none of these cards was on the docket to be nerfed. Um, I get the feeling that while Twisted Fate has always been powerful, it is like... I don't think very it's very fair. It, yeah. yeah, it is good enough. Like, yeah. Basically, it's one of those cards... Uh, ugh, this, just, this is a, ma this is a Magic Player reference. Perfect, it, it, yeah. This is like... I, I Twisted Fate has, has assumed a place like Mystic Shot where even though it is one of the best cards in it's, its region, it's, yeah, it's it is not going, going to, to get exist. Yeah. touched, really. So... Uh, I would be shocked if any of these decks gets nerfed, and I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Hush goes to three mana, other 
Pale Cascade, other Targon cards get changed a little bit. Grand Plaza. Grand Plaza. People are expecting a Grand Plaza nerf, which... Well, we don't need to that Which, you know, right might now. change the meta <laughs> enough that whole different types of decks are good. Like, maybe Field Rush is king now and they tech to beat this deck or whatever. But after a balance patch in which all those cards get nerfed, like, this is a great time to be playing this deck. It's just, it both has a very good proactive plan and attacks the meta really well. Um, I think that we can continue to iterate and decide, like, you know, whether Ezreal is the good version. Because Yeah, I'm really, I'm really, really excited for the, the more iterations of yeah. this deck because I... I stand by my initial claim that these decks are still built with a pile of awful cards. And I understand at this point, I've come around on many of the awful cards, but not quite all of them. And I, I really hope that we end up in a place where like we have a very agreed upon version. And I don't feel like I'm just playing this, like where I don't feel like I have the worst card in my deck. Yeah, and yeah. It, it takes a long time for any deck to get to that point. You know, reasonably uh, we haven't even talked about like mind meld, or suit yeah. up, so, which are a lot of cards that have been slowly phased out. I think that none of us have played versions with Mind Meld. Just really yeah. quickly, we're mostly off that card, right, in general? Yeah. I lost to it once in the mirror, and it is good in the mirror, but I just think that it's not what the mirror's about. Yeah. yeah. I, so, think, I think it's it, you should have won if you either played better. I think if you're losing the mirror, it's because you played poorly or your opponent played particularly well. It's very hard. This deck is also very not traditional Legends of Runeterra. Yes. There's a lot of decisions that you have to make that don't look right. Yeah. You tap out for a pick a card reasonably often. You I'm very excited to see where this deck ends up in yeah. in like two more weeks probably. Yeah. I think I think it'll be like four or five cards different, but I think those four or five cards are going to make a huge difference. Honestly, I don't think this deck is broken and would love them to tweak other things up, like revert some other nerfs. Oh, yeah, to be clear, that's another thing I want to talk about with this deck, is that this deck, I don't think this deck is too good. I think that if you, if people just play different cards, uh, this deck will, this deck will once again uh, feel like it's having a rough time beating a lot of the things going on. If you just have you know, Grasp the Undying for Twisted Fate, Withering Whale for all the Burble Fish or whatever. Like, there aren't really that many threats in the yeah, deck. Yeah, you right? kill, like, you put a lot of people to exactly zero, and this deck gets a lot of mileage out of people not yeah. having a ton of elusive blockers and not having a lot of healing. Healing, yeah. Yep, yeah. The prevalence of Noxus is a huge, one of the many, several reasons why this deck is so strong right now. Cool. Um, so, I think if, if we're okay, then I would like to segue this into. There's one more point I want to make please. about this deck. Um, really quickly, just to summarize, uh, Basically, the first point was that um, five bad cards is roughly equivalent to one good card. Maybe less than five. Maybe it's like three. Hopefully, it's like three. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, it's like three. Um, and what was your... You, you had a second point about it, didn't you? Uh, I have a real quick rundown that I want to do on this deck. Real, like, like just like literally clip notes. Like, and uh, Do you want me to say it now? Uh, never mind. I'll just, I'll just go over my last yeah. point. My last point is that... Um, something we haven't said yet about the fact that we play so many one cost spells is one really, really, really powerful thing to do in Legends of Runeterra is to meaningfully pass priority yeah. and force your opponent into a position where they either have to click the pass button to do nothing or use up a majority of their mana to do something meaningful. This is a reason that open attacking is so good because it's an action that passes priority and doesn't use your mana. And then they have to act. They they are then forced to play a spell or pass the turn, letting you hit the end turn button. And it means that they get to play a thing. Then you get to choose how you use your mana in response to that. Exactly. And this deck, because so many things are small and so many things are slow, um, there's a lot of opportunities to make your opponent tap out to do what they want. And this deck really, really thrives when your opponent is at one or two mana and you suddenly know they can't withering whale me they can't avalanche me they can't da, da, deny da. they can't there's so many things that can punish you that the moment you don't have to play around them you get to just vomit your whole hand onto the board that was and a, just attack that's an excellent point i i hard agree it's a big reason why this deck is so good yeah. a huge thing that i do a lot is maneuvering whenever i have twisted fate in the card pick a hand card in my hand i am looking to maneuver my opponent into a position where i have three mana they can't kill my twisted fate and i can play pick a card because then i'm going to flip it at burst speed after i draw those three exactly. cards exactly that is a um, huge interaction and then also the iterative improvement burble fish yeah loop. okay cool so i think noble will go over your checklist real quick and then i'm going to segue into where do we go from here after that cool so go ahead so um Real quick, I just wanted to give, like, the rundown on this deck. I think you should play the Fizz version. I do not think that you should play Suit Up or Mind Melt. I think that you should play the card Aftershock. I think Aftershock's a flex plot, but it's currently good against uh, 
it's good against the Grand Plaza. Uh, it's burn that goes directly to the face to complement your already burn package that gets better the more of it you have. And it's also really good against stuff like Ezdraven because their champions are both three toughness. Um, and it's, you know, fine in the mirror, but not great. I will say that I think if you're playing less than three copies of Aftershock right now, you're a lunatic. I think that you're playing three. I'm playing two. You're playing two? Yeah, I'm playing two in a salvage. <clears throat> I just disagree. Anyway, continue. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, Aftershock's good right now. Um, I think that you should be playing the full three Mystic Shot and, and um, uh, get excited. Get excited. Hard to um, agree. You know, um, I think that. And then, real quick, Mulliganing advice. I always keep Twisted Fate because that card's broken. I always keep Fizz, almost always. Um, I keep Parley depending on the matchup. I um, always keep Ballistic Bot. And honestly, a thing that I just realized that makes me want to cut Coral Creatures from the deck is I don't keep it in my opening hand and it's a two drop. I uh, always keep that card yeah. in my opening so hand. So maybe I should just be keeping it. Um, but Ballistic Bot, very powerful, very important. I keep Rummage. The ones that are a little more context dependent are Rummage. Pick a uh, card. Burble, bur pick a card. Uh, Burblefish itself, which I actually almost always keep Burblefish, but I almost never keep Iterative Improvement. I feel find that there's just not enough room in your four-card hand that you can keep a bunch of spells that you want to do on turn seven, and you just find them because you draw so many cards yeah. that like you don't be afraid to ship back Iterative Improvement I've, or a second copy I've, of Burblefish. I've found myself putting Burblefish back somewhat frequently. More more than I assumed I would. Just when I like draw my opening four cards and I'm like, I can't keep this Burble Fish. Yeah, you're like, like I'm gonna I see just, ten cards before. Yeah, I just have to do something. You know, if you if you have a just like a hand that just doesn't really do anything, and I had like I, I had this feeling a lot, and maybe I'm playing the deck wrong and grabbing onto my old instincts with the deck where I'm like where I like draw my hand and I'm like, this just doesn't do anything like i need to find at least something you, you know? guys is find mulligan, myself your, your mulligan overview is very interesting to me because there were several points where you were like i frequently keep rummage but put away pick a card or like something else like there were a few cards in there that i was like i always keep that card and then i always ship that other card like interesting um but uh yeah. i do agree that shipping burble fish i usually ship burble fish as well yeah, yeah kind of um, counterintuitive and you just and you just uh you know you draw so many cards that you get it yeah um and then just being careful like get excited i usually ship because you want it to, you don't want to actually discard a real card from your hand also agree with that, a lot yeah. of the time um and i you know zap spray and i usually ship back because it's four, four mana yeah. yeah um i would love to find like another good two or three drop that i could put in this deck um and then the last thing i want to say about, is about fizz fizz is the best example in legends of runeterra of something magic players know is the threat of activation you, when you have when you're attacking your opponent with like leveled up fizz and like two burble fish like they have to mystic shot something that isn't fizz because they open themselves getting blown out a huge amount so times when you can tap out when you sneakily have a zero mana card in your hand are very powerful because you get to tempo them with discarding uh, a cards to um Poro 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 cannon. Cannon. Yeah. i also always discard that card unless i'm playing against a zoe or a timo deck um mulligan that card um, which is unintuitive because it's a zero cost spell, but it's actually a spell that you want to play. That's with. another twisted. That's fate. another card that sucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that card. That card, <laughs> that does card sucks. Suck. It's oh. it's really good with fizz sometimes, but that's another one that I that I look at that wiggly burble fish deck and I'm like, really? Do we, do I really have to play this? And I <laughs> bias towards keeping mana open, just to uh, just to threat of activation my fizz. And so if I don't have the attack token on turn one, I will wait. And then play him on turn two with Absolutely. two man up because then if they want to try to vile feast or go hard or whatever, you can really blow them out because he cancels the whole spell. So he gets rid of everything if it targets him. I just had, I had my opponent true shot barrage my board and they just couldn't point one damage at the fizz because it would endanger Eat him canceling the whole true shot the barrage. Whole true shot barrage. Like, also, why are they playing that? But you know, um, it wasn't. I know what you're thinking. It wasn't Ezreal's champion spell. Um, though he was playing as Draven. Um, and then I just killed him with the Fizz. Like, you know, and yeah. so a lot of times, Sometimes even if you don't have it, fizz. yeah, even if you don't have it, you're just going to get them. And yeah. Yeah, regardless of whether you have a spell to cast, your opponent is not going to put a removal, point a removal spell at Fizz unless they have to. Because even if you just Mystic Shot your face, you turn Mystic Shot into Nopify plus two damage, which yeah, is great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, they're just, nobody's just going to point a removal spell at Fizz. It's just, it's just awful almost always, right? Like, yeah. So even when you have zero mana because of the existence of Poro Cannon, usually people won't do it, at least nowadays. So I want to segue into what, where do we go from here, right? Like if you're, at home on the ladder and you can't beat this deck and you know maybe you don't have the wild cards to join them maybe you're just not a participant in the the holy burble fish and you don't believe in it and you just want to stay away from it where do you go and I, I i've got my first proposition my first initial idea which i 
tested out last night and I was very happy about, and I'm sure Hugh's going to be very happy to hear, and that's Anivia. Yes. I think <laughs> Anivia is really good right now. Really I agree. Good. I, last night was just, I just had, I just had the absolute time of my life last night. I'm, I'm just going to paint the picture for you. So, all right. It's like, it's, it's like 9 p.m. I'm hanging out with a few friends. We're watching the third Hobbit movie. Um, which we're only watching because oh. we're only watching because we watched the other, the first two. Um, and you know what? The movie's not that good, but you know what is a great distraction from this like mediocre. decent movie? Mediocre. It's, it's, it's decent at least, regardless, is playing Anivia Control and just loving it. I was having so much fun just playing Anivia Control. Like every game just felt sick. Uh, I played against this Burblefish deck like three times and just absolutely annihilated it on repeat. Um, and I was just like hanging out, like just like sitting there. I found myself just sitting there in this room. Like people were talking, everyone was watching the movie. People were making popcorn. There were some people playing Matt, like Commander, on the table behind me. And I was just like hanging out, like dancing on the couch, like playing this Anivia control deck. Look up, see Legolas, like hit somebody with an axe, and then look back down. I'm just like dancing to myself, like putting my fourth copy of Anivia into play, <laughs> like laughing maniacally. Like you can't do anything about. It. Like what are you gonna do about it? There's absolutely nothing that a yeah, lot of Anivia decks can do about it. Yeah, Anivia is like truly the antithesis of everything this deck wants to do. It like has every single healing effect. It has every single mass damage effect. Like it's just I was having so much fun. Yeah. Like I, I remember sitting sitting myself being like, like I would like hand the phone to Noble and then just be like, look, I'm doing the Anivia Dougie and just like hang around yeah, and then like Anivia queue up there. again and just like I just want like five or six games in a row i wasn't even playing on my my account either i was just playing on a friend's account just having i didn't care it was so much fun like i i loved it i think i really recommend looking at anivia right now i think that that deck has really good answers to this wiggly purple fish that's my number one pick for like if you're sick of this thing um also if you're like trying to play like tf go hard piles still you probably need to put withering whale in your deck withering yeah. whale big up on withering whale big up in shadow isles in general I'm are there also any other decks that you guys really think might come also out? really not convinced on the card burble fish in the tf go hard deck you just it, i don't think it's good. oh i don't think it's good um, i am going to keep testing it for my article i'm gonna try it out i saw a version with scuttlegeist so that you just have like a million things that are like zero mana oh that's really cool actually i actually i played a game and i had my scuttlegeist i drew it it is 10 cost right reduced by one by the number of units that have died it was at zero and my burble fish was at three I had I had ten units die before I had cast four spells. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, do you are there any decks that you guys think that are going to to like come about, or or what what changes do you want to make to meta decks to deal with this burble fish problem? Like clearly, clearly we're gonna have to do something, right? Like we can't just queue up our same old decks and expect not to get run over by thirteen elusive power. So that's not entirely true, uh, I don't think, because one we had that meta report. Uh, Ezdraven is huge. It is the biggest chunk of the meta, according to that. Do you, do you think that Ezreal Draven is favored? I think it's uh, even. Exactly. I think it's even. I've which played is against good... the deck seven times, and I am 3-4, but I think I should be 4-3 because I made a mistake. Uh, real quick, uh, just PSA. If you're going to attack and you have a flipped Twisted Fate in play, uh, you need to put your creatures, drag them up to attack before you cast the burst spell. Otherwise, it won't let you attack after it puts the Twisted Fate skill on the stack. So you need to ready them to attack, then cast your burst spell, because you'll get the card and get to attack. Um, and I just, like, lost a priority, so I, like, died to decimate plus Mystic Shot when I shouldn't have. Yeah. Um, I think it's pretty even. I, I think if I had to pick a favored deck, I would, in fact, pick Burblefish. But it is one of the closest meta decks currently, like, that, that is popular to beating it. It's, it's a very skill-intensive matchup. It's worth noting that I think that Ezreal's probably better in this matchup than Swain, too, for that deck. So, yes. Yeah, just the actual 1-3 elusive body is actually quite relevant. So it might be time to, to put the Ezreal's back in instead of the Swain's as well. Because yeah. Swain A lot of people never took him out, good. and they're going to think that it was right the whole time, and yeah. they were wrong. There was a little and bit when okay. Swain was better, but, you know, it's good. And that's okay. Yeah. And also... Might be time to put the Ezreal's back in. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I have noticed a small resurgence of the original... TF yes, Swain deck. Yes, yes, I've seen it too. A bunch. Oh boy, that deck is <laughs> my poor burble fish got death lotus. Yeah. Oh no. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was yeah gonna basically, work um, that deck is incredibly strong against burble fish. It's just a very strong deck that fell out of favor with the existence of Ez Draven, and I forget what else. Uh, there was something else that attacked it. Go hard, it. mostly. Yeah. Okay. It, it, the Go hard came out. Well, and getting then there was no reason to. Yeah, make it. Right. Re That's make it rain it. got nerfed and go hard came out, and so it just 
it just fell out of it was just worse than the new tf elise deck that makes that sense they got to play go hard instead of the but yeah that deck. deck's making a bit of a comeback because it's very good against burlfish wait a minute all of these decks play the same card Twisted Fate? Twisted Fate. Yeah. yeah. This is the, such, is the, Hello. <laughs> such is the evolution of Twisted Fate. Yeah. Uh, there's also, um, this is a little off meta, I think. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's another, Maybe it's rising, time. Maybe it's another rising star. Uh, I've seen a lot of weird amount of Teemo Ezreal. Oh, I've seen a lot burn of that deck, too. right? Yeah. Oh, oh, Ezreal, not Draven. Oh. No, no, not Draven. No, no, Teemo Ezreal. And it just, it actually. Oh, like, is, that the, is that the Freljord one? It's, yes. Yes, it's closer to Teemo Sejuani than. Yeah, the it's like Teemo Sejuani, except their plan is not to level Sejuani and lock your board over and over again. Their plan is to just, just kill, kill you. you. Smart. With iterative improvement plus Puff Cat Peddler. It's better. Oh, I haven't seen iterative I improvement. Oh, it's, um, that's, I think, oh, one of the also, best cards. Also, fun in the fact deck. about iterative improvement I won multiple games when I was uh, coaching uh, Dustin in our Discord. Um, because we iterative improvement our opponent's Karina, and then a different game Ooh. we iterative improvements our opponent's like Captain Farron, and we just like killed them. Yeah, oh, awesome. I, I, yeah, yeah. That, remember when I remember when we were sweet. evaluating cards oh, yeah. way, way, way we'll, back. We'll, we'll, we'll get, get to that. that. We have oh, a, we'll he, get was, to he was right about that one. Okay, yeah. Hugh, Hugh nailed it. I honestly think that uh, one of our problems with how long it takes us to answer listener questions is that we double dip because we talk about them in the episode because we know what they <laughs> are, and then we like get them again. And we're like, let's answer this. Yeah. So. Um, I think that, that those are all going to be good directions to move forward. But I think that it's probably time to make a cut. Open your deck, I think, before the next time you go play ladder. I think it's probably time to like open whatever deck you're planning on playing. Look at the list and be like, all right, how do I make this a little bit better against like these up, up the matchup yeah. by like 2%, yeah, 1%. Yeah, I, I think that it's it's time to take your deck in the yeah. other direction. I think that we were wrong and that Asol Grand Plaza decks were S tier when we did our meta report and are now, now not now good not because they're good. not good against oh. TFS. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if, okay. <laughs> what, final thing about if you're not convinced about playing this deck, if you hate Grand Plaza. Oh, yeah, this is going to this. I have... I'm not kidding. I have a hundred percent win rate. Oh, I've never against lost to a Grand Plaza deck. Any Grand against you look all at this deck them. and you're like, no, these creatures probably get eaten by their challengers, no, and somehow they just never do. One, you it's because with... every time they you stun like all the things. Yep. You, every time that they eat one of your things, you're like, oh great, you just ate point six of a card. Yeah, you, you ate a coral creatures. Congratulations. I was or, trumping anyway. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah or, you, you, I stunned your thing, or. I aftershocked your Grand Plaza is the biggest one. Yeah, that happens a lot. Because too. you draw so many cards, it's so easy to see one yeah, of you your three aftershocks. Yeah. It, exactly. So if you want to eat the Grand Plaza really easily, play the stack. All right. So I think before so we're gonna move on to our listener questions real quick. Let's go one one last final thoughts around around the room. I'll I'll lead first because I have the least experience playing the deck and you guys might have more to add. I wanna say this deck is good. Uh, you should play it if you haven't, if you have the means to do so. It's worth playing. It's very fun. It feels like a very different style of Legends of Runeterra than most other Legends of Runeterra decks have felt like, at least to me personally. Um, the You need to be careful about which cards you're choosing to play win, and the priority system is very relevant for this deck and is a big reason as to how you can gain your advantage because you're not gaining it through sheer card quality. So you really need to find your advantages in other means. And uh the deck's really fun so play it i think the fizz version is the best deck i also very funnily started playing the fizz version went six and four because i was playing 10 games of each deck played the draven twisted fate version went seven three and then played the ezreal twisted fate version and went eight and two um but you think the, the but fizz i do think the, the first one is the best one i, think <laughs> I just got better with the deck but i will say that the draven tf version is really fun too it's a little different because you can't play like rummage and you can't play rummage so you're playing um uh pilfered goods in the and Slip. warning shot and like, uh, what's the card? It's just really, the black really market, heavy. Black, black market. market yeah, it's guy, really heavy on Draven. Yeah, and then it does really cool stuff with survival instincts. By the way, survival, survival instincts is se survival skills secretly OP. I played <laughs> multiple games where my opponent has played something like Anivia, uh, a rally with a bunch of challenger units, had the grand plaza and play with the scout units, and I've just like cast the card and it's just ended the game because they're, it just blanked their entire attack step. Like, I've beat multiple Harrowings by casting that card. All of my creatures can block the Harrowinged creatures yeah, without die. dying, and then I just get to kill them on the backswing. Um, and the STF version was also fun and might be better in the mirror. I um, I could see that. I don't know about that. Easily. So um, play whichever of the ones of these that you like. Um, if you want to embrace the Burble, um, you know, play a couple games with each of them. They're all neat and interesting and different. Um, but I'm currently climbing with the Fizz one. I... I, I <laughs> 
I started this experiment and was going to play five of each of the Twist of Fate decks. I was in mid plat, or I was like in, uh, in diamonds. No, no, I was in plat. Were you in platinum? I was in mid plat, and I was like, uh, yeah, you know, I don't really, or I was in high plat. Maybe I made it. It doesn't. It doesn't 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 matter. matter. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna play, you know, fifty games, and then whatever, and then I'll climb to masters after that. Then I won so much with the first three decks that I was like, I'm not gonna try the other ones. I'm gonna win my next like four games to masters, and I'm like one game away right now. Um, and then I'll go back to testing it because these decks were that good. Yeah. Um. That's a pretty good summary. The only thing I want to add to all of that is a little bit of a slightly bigger statement. This deck, I think, is the actual first genuine example in this game of a deck that does not... So part of part of why we, how we evaluate cards is we look at the card and we think, is this card good by itself? And I think we have finally found some... Whoever, whoever came up with this, I don't know who it was. The, like the original creator of the deck, whatever. Someone saw this and saw more than just the cards on an individual level. They saw how all of these cards synergized, added up together. And I think this is the first really, really good example of a deck that when you're looking at the deck list, you think so many of these cards are subpar. How is this deck good? Someone saw the this ability... Deck is way better than the sum of its parts. Exactly. Yeah. This Someone saw the synergies and was able to capitalize in a meaningful way on how all these cards work with one another. And I think this is... This might be the start of people figuring out how to synergize cards in this game better and build decks with cards that previously were considered bad I do but think can be Liz, made good. At least Twisted Fate is also kind of a version of that. Because I remember seeing a first version of that deck that looked like it was playing a bunch of bad cards and then you iterate a little bit and it's just like insane. So. Yeah. The anyway. thing, the the deck that I was going to use as an example was the Team Osreal deck. Once again, a lot of the cards in that deck not great by themselves, but all of a sudden you're hitting your puff cat peddler with iterative improvement. You've got a bunch of really, really small spells. The deck, the deck's parts synergize so well together yeah. that the deck actually functions in spite of playing quote unquote bad cards. Yeah. Frostbite like is kind of better than damage with Ezreal because it's burst speed and it just like keeps you alive against eight eights, but but mystic shots don't and then it just kills them. Yeah. Yeah. Um anyway, so so that was our take on the new the the new burble fish. So if if you're interested in hearing more about the burble fish, we've been talking about a lot in the Discord, which brings me to our Discord listener questions. So uh we're we're gonna be talking about a lot of the burble fish in these two as a fair warning, but I think we got we got some really good ones. So I wanna start with our question of the week. I, I think this is the question of the week for sure. I, I like this segment. I'm making it a thing. Solidifying questions of the week. For right. now, you get a honor. Yeah. You get to well, feel so good this, about this it. Is a, basically, we're going to... Yeah, we'll create an exclusive I said, channel where almost only previous winners of question <laughs> yeah, of the week no, can hang out. No. No, just, uh, so. Before when I've said, like, this is my favorite question. We're just going to make that a thing. Yeah, we're just, this is my favorite question for the week. So this one comes from Teddy in the Discord. They ask, how do you approach learning? especially when you don't have the coaches to help you out. Do you feel like you hit a ceiling? And if yes, how do you approach breaking new ground? Well, I guess I'll start. So for me, I I feel like I have yet to hit a plateau in Legends of Frontera. I feel like the game is new enough and I haven't been playing it for long enough that I feel like I, I very rarely finish a game and I'm like, I didn't learn anything from that game. I don't think I've hit it yet. I can say from other game perspectives, you know, games that I've just been playing longer or have played more in the past that you, and I know it'll happen in Legends of Runeterra, 100%. Eventually, you start to hit a plateau. And the the real secret is to try to remember that even if you aren't making leaps like you once were, you know, even if you used to be gaining larger percents quicker, it's important to just make sure you don't stay flat. Right, anything is better than flat or even down. Some people have a down slide. Some some people backslide really hard when they get to a high level because they stop putting in the effort and they stop thinking about it. And a lot of the time they don't even notice it, and they think they've just kind of plateaued or are getting better much slower. And in reality, they're worse than they were three months ago. Right, like it's really just as long as you keep your mind. For me, I think as long as I keep my mind focused on trying to get better, I will be able to do so. It just it eventually is going to come in smaller and smaller portions. And I'm thankfully that I don't think I've hit that yet. 
at least in Legends of Runeterra, which I'm I'm very grateful about and is what makes me so excited for the competitive esports future of this game is because you know we've all been playing this game for like a year about yeah. it's like about a year if not a little more right yeah and so and the, the fact that i feel like i'm not even close to that skill ceiling makes me really excited to see what the absolute best players of the game are like in five years yeah. um oh yeah i can go if you yeah um i think that for me one of the biggest so I mentioned this a little bit at some point. I don't remember when I mentioned this, but um, I think I'm pretty bad at deck building. I think I'm honestly terrible at deck building. This is something I can't, I just, I look at this wall of cards. I have a full collection. I look at this wall of cards and I think to myself. <laughs> that is so really quick, important brag. <laughs> well, well, just to, okay, sure. Just to make yeah, it clear yeah, that no, I'm looking no, at every no, card. Like no, I, no, I see yeah, this yeah. giant wall of cards and I'm like. <laughs> I have no idea what to do. It's one, choice paralysis, two, just, like, information overload. And I just, like, deck building is something that, like, I've never considered myself good at. And there's uh, there's several aspects of the game. I can't – that's the biggest one. But, like, there are, there are smaller things. I can't think of it at the moment uh, right now. But the way I have found that I learn the most is by finding people who are particularly good at the things I am particularly bad at. There are other things that I th consider myself good at that I think, like, absolutely I can improve on. I think there's no part of this game that I think I can't improve on. That's just not a thing. Like, you can always improve. Um, the way I prefer to learn, though, uh, because I like to gain the most progress quickly, I think that's just a general Yeah, you're thing. a spike about learning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we all are. Yeah, yeah I want to optimize, right? So I generally try and find things that I suck at and find people who don't suck at those things and learn as much as I can from those people. And that's my go-to Absolutely. Learning. learning. Yeah, another... I'm, I'm going to interject real quick before we go to Noble. I have, like... So I think that finding particular people... So in the question, Ted, I mentioned not having a coach. But I think the thing about uh, the internet and the world we live in nowadays is that there are always coaches that you can find that you don't have to pay for and... That like are us. free, right? There, there's there's going to be plenty of content everywhere, and it's not going to be as pointed or as direct as like hiring a coach and sitting down and having them talk to you about your individual play for an hour, or however much time. But there is always something to learn from watching certain videos, and especially from watching different people's perspectives. You're far more likely to learn a notable thing if you watch a half hour video from someone that you've never heard of that you know is good at the game than if you watch another video by the same person in a year which is unfortunate but like people get into certain play patterns and people excel at those certain things and so just even just experiencing other things briefly can oftentimes open a new door to your own learning and your own play absolutely go ahead noble i was sitting over here sitting on exactly that that i was getting ready to say oh, and then i had to and I let <laughs> you talk in front of me <laughs> and then you were like hey let me real quick and i was like Okay. Uh, first, I wanted to bounce off what Hugh said. Uh, I'm also an awful deck builder. I tried to build a TF Burblefish deck before it like happened, and I was like, what does this deck look like? That deck is still in my collection. It is 60 cards. I just put everything I can think of in it. <laughs> See, and this is my point. This is my Burblefish point. <laughs> and then is, you, you do exactly what I said people always and do. I got overwhelmed <laughs> with removing things from it and choosing uh. like which of the things that I wanted to do. Um, so there are two huge things that you can improve. And so one is, um, like, then it ties directly into what Alex was saying about really good players who kind of backslide a little bit. And I notice this in myself a lot. And it's when I get comfortable enough with a game that I'm playing them on autopilot. I'm not really thinking about decisions, and I'm kind of just doing it. This is huge for me with Legends of Runeterra because I'm on my phone in the living room with my roommates or making food or watching a TV show. And... You know, I'm just like, you know, clicking buttons and I'm losing games that I absolutely should not be losing. And so, you know, it's okay to turn on this game and play whatever you want, even ranked, and to just turn your brain off and have fun. But if you really want to climb and you really want to play each game, you need to be devoting your attention to it and really consciously thinking out of things. Like when you're by yourself and you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. You're like, why am I going to do this? And like... And is this what I want to do? What's my plan in this matchup? What are the win conditions? Um, uh, honestly, playing a little bit of TF Burlefish is going to be great for you learning how to identify the win cons in your deck and your opponent's deck. Um, 
and you know the ways to maneuver yourself in those decisions. Are you trying to win with Twisted Fate? Are you trying to win with a big Burble Fish turn? Are you just going to chip damage and then burn them out, uh, etc.? Um, the second thing, and is huge, is other other people. Like literally, like you don't have access to a coach, but I handed my phone to my roommate to play this Burble Fish deck, and he won all the games and played them very differently than I would have. And he doesn't even play that much Legends of Runeterra. Talking with you just now about what I keep and what I mulligan, like just getting yourself out of the headspace of what you've decided that you want to do and then considering what someone else would do is so hugely valuable. Because Having... even if you are right and they yes, are absolutely, absolutely wrong, you get to explain why you're right and think through it and then you both learn. So exactly. absolutely. It's so important to have people to bounce ideas off of. If you don't have if you have a group of friends that aren't into Legends of Rune Terra, try to get them into it. And if 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 your friends just don't like playing Legends of Rune Terra, you don't know anybody that does, then yeah, you can find groups online who are yeah. who are just committed Reddit. to getting better. The Reddit, there's just a million discords, yeah. including ours. There's a million articles that are getting written all the time. There's Mobilitics articles. Like there are so many resources talking to people about what you think about the game is absolutely the best way to continue yeah. learning about the game. Yeah, and like I want to be clear that a lot of these like Reddit threads or Reddit uh, Reddit threads or Twitter feeds or Discords are honestly not that helpful because it's someone being like, this is good, this is bad here. And then, then like not a lot of discussion happens, which is why, in my opinion, it's way better to do it in person, which is hard because we're in a pandemic, or over Discord, like in a voice chat, just like chatting yeah. is huge, especially if there's a game going on. Um, and that can be hard sometimes because too many like when three different people are talking about plays you rope a lot but um i just think that's really important um yeah nobody is ever always 100 percent right about anything so and that that includes yourself so you have to you have to realize that and you have to always listen to what people what other people think be you know if you think they're awful at the game a lot of the time they still make good points and even if they're yeah even if they're wrong you still get to think through why they're wrong, and you can learn from that. Even if you're so. a Masters player, you can learn for, learn something from a Bronze player. It's absolutely you're, you're true. Not, you're not immune to learning things thinking, about this game from someone who is a, a lower ELO than you. Yeah, thinking about the game in a different way is always going to be beneficial for everyone involved. I think there's there's almost no way, if assuming you have a reasonable attitude towards it, that you'll go into a conversation... Uh, uh, and you'll have a conversation about this game that all participants won't end up learning something about the game after it. This is honestly one of my favorite things about um, just getting to talk about decks and stuff with you, Hugh, because me and Alex live in the same house, so our opinions like converge very yeah, often. Yeah, we, we have because like, we talk about so them many all conversations the time, and like what things are happens, good, yeah. and then we're like playing the same list, and then like you, who's like you know doing it your own thing and playing place. by yourself yeah. having a different opinion is super valuable and super awesome so all right so that was that was our question of the week thank you again to today for that let's move on we got a few more here this first one comes from twilight they ask what are your thoughts on the tf fizz meta discovery i think we covered that one so the second part mostly do you believe that a new deck can rise to the meta despite no balance patches I I think once again, this is just a perfect example of yes. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. 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 Snap yes. It Absolutely. It happened with TF Gohard, honestly. It happened with TF Gohard. It happened with this. It um, happens with every card game. Just period. Yeah. Like, there are always decks that people miss, and it always takes a oh, while gosh. for somebody to notice it or the, the meta to shift into the right place yeah. for a new deck to, to be good against specific things. There is always a new deck. Okay. I'm, I think, at least, that hasn't been found. I am going to pollute this, lead, this beautiful, clean, Holy Burble Legends from Hair podcast with a one minute Magic the Gathering story. Um, this is one of my favorite things that has ever happened in Magic the Gathering. Um, is there's this format called Modern where there's a whole ton of cards, um, and then uh, a deck was discovered and became tier one basically overnight, full of only cards that had already existed before. No, no, um, that some man too. was like, "What if?" There was a man and there was a card called Lantern of Insight. <laughs> oh my god. And this deck played like the worst possible magic cards. Like magic cards that were like Completely unplayable bulk unplayable. rares. Like to know this card existed, you had to like search for very specific keywords to see if it worked. And it just ended up being meta defining prison deck. And just it just took one person thinking about this deck for so long and being like, what do I play? Like if a card reveals the top cards of both of our deck. And then I play other random cards that let me remove the top card of their deck. I can make sure they never draw a good card again. And, like, then he, like, spiked a GP, and then everyone was talking about it, and this deck just turned out to be great. And it had existed in that form for, like, 
a year at least. And it just turned out to be a tier one deck that just hadn't been found. And the card pool in Legends of Runeterra is not that big yet. Um, and a lot of decks are played. Like, you know, Ash Sedwani is a deck that's been around a while. Like, uh, Fiora Shen has been around since literal beta, you know. So there's less of that, but I think there's still absolutely... So, since the game's so new, there's so many things that can be found. So I want to uh, levy this into actually how I think this meta re revolves, which actually I think ties really well into the next question we have from Martin. They ask, how much do you think the meta is driven by what the top five streams played in the last, like, 24 hours, for so example? Much. And this, this I think, actually mostly depends, or mostly is the determining factor for what Noble was describing, is what decks actually catch on, right? And, and it has to do a lot with whether the deck's good or not. But I strongly believe that there are probably, like, five or six people at least out there in the world all playing complete brews that just don't play that much, or maybe they do play a lot, and just nobody's seen the new sweet brew deck they're playing. That's insane. And if if it just happens to get played on stream, or a streamer happens to see it on Twitter and decide it looks sweet and play it, that is immediately the like thing that that takes it onto the mainstream. Right? Yeah. A big Reddit post is made about it. Boom! Everybody sees it. It, it happened with Lee Zoe, yeah. and it also is happening with Twisted F Fizz. In Twisted Fizz is a really good name. Twisted Fizz. Twisted Fizz. In like in real time right now it's happening like, yeah i i'm watching like i scrolled into my meta thing and i saw mogwai's tweet about targon and i was like this tweet is dated and it was like <laughs> two days old yeah. <laughs> and he was like, like targon's busted and they were like list of card balance changes and it was five cards from targon and i was like i was like the meta has changed so much in these two days and like now you know like swim or mogwai or, or whomever popular streamer has played the deck on stream and then it exploded on the ladder and i think that this absolutely happens yeah yeah so i think I think that the biggest reason why new decks are discovered and become meta is because streamers play them. I also, th I think that when a meta is settled, uh, the actual decks that the streamers are playing on stream is is not that impactful to the meta. Yeah. I think Sometimes that when... they play brews and then those brews catch on for a little bit, but exactly. usually they're not actually that yeah, good. Yeah, I really think the, the thing that, that affects the meta in relation to what content creators are playing is almost always new decks. I think that when when a deck is an established meta deck, nobody, you know, if three streamers are playing Feel the Rush today or whatever, I, I no doubt that gonna, it's really going to have a big yeah, impact. No one's on going to flock to build Feel the Rush and play it all of a sudden. Yeah, and usually. I'm not going to say no one because people will, but I don't I mean, think you're going to notice it, right? That, like that you, happened when the card Feel the Rush yeah, came out. I think that it was a new deck. Right, but and it, it was a new deck. It was a new deck. Exactly. Same way. Exactly. I think that streamers affect what new decks become meta. If a streamer goes 10 and 0 on stream with. TF Burblefish or whatever, guess what you're going to be playing against on ladder all day tomorrow? It's going to be TF Burblefish. If a streamer goes 10 with TF Gohard, you're going to see about the same much TF Gohard as yeah. you're going to see any other day, right? You yeah. know, it's going to be very similar. Everybody already knew the deck was good. Good player plays a good deck and wins. It's not really that shocking, right? People like to play the the new the shiny new thing because it's new. Yeah, especially if it's sweet. Is Burble <laughs> Fate or Twisted Fish a better name? I I named my deck Turbo Burble. <laughs> that's a good one. I actually like that one a lot. That's, um, a, that's a real banger all, name. So I um, decided to test all these Twisted Fate decks, and I will continue doing that after I win two more dang games on ladder. Um, but uh, I named them all things such that they would be the first alphabetically so that I could take a screenshot of all the Twisted Fate cards. So like a -A -A and so much. Well, no, name. but like it turns out that Fizz, Gangplank and Elise are all high enough They're in the letters. Just... So, like, it's those. It's the name of the champion before Twisted Fate so that they're all right oh, there. Nice. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. All right. So. Ezreal. That was let's one. move on. Draven. Yeah. It, it's just perfect. They just all, they're just all up there. All right. Let's move on to our next listener question. This one comes from Dragon. They ask, now that we're almost two months into the Cosmic Creations expansion, what do you think were the five strongest cards from this expansion? All right, so I, I think that it's going to be hard to order these necessarily off the top of our head. I think that, that I if have we my top to... two in my head. Uh, top three. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. It's hard. Yeah, I I think I I can order my like top two or three pretty pretty concisely. But so I think that let's let's just go over the easy ones. So Zoe, Zoe, Zoe. I think Zoe is is number one probably. Probably number one. I actually yeah. think um the Grand Plaza. Oh my god. 
I had a top two and then a top three, and I literally forgot both of Zoe and the Grand Plaza. Wow. Okay, okay what was your top three yeah, minus I, those two My cards. first was, like, Ballistic Bot. It's in so many decks. Yeah, it's a, a really one. powerful effect. It revitalized Burn. It's really good in Esdraven. It's, really, it's a big, huge part of this current deck. And then it's also in, like, a bunch of random Victor decks. Yep. Yeah. So, like, Ballistic, Bot, I, is Ballistic Bot is, like, perhaps the best card. I could see that one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think, I think Ballistic Bot, Grand Plaza, Zoe. I, I mean, I, it has to be Burblefish. Wiggly Burblefish, at this yeah. point, has to be in the top four as well. Yeah, I mean, we can't, well. we can't just plug it this long and not say yeah. it's in the top five. Yeah, I mean, given we technically the, can, but, like, I do genuinely yeah, think Given the recent update, I think that it is absolutely in the top five. I, I will say, I think both Riven and Victor were a little disappointing. But I do think that this there was a significant meta shift because of Burblefish. And then there's also a lot of really cool new cards like um it's it's the it's a Zoe spell. It is not Spell Thief. Yeah. Wow, you nailed that. Yep. It's because yeah. it's a it's because it's one of her abilities in League, right? Uh yeah, but also I just it yeah. That that's the one it. you were thinking of. Of course it is. That card's sweet and yeah, it's not her jam really spell. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um so I, I think that it's like it's it'd be really easy to make a like ten cards that were like that impacted relevant. the meta and relevant, but like top five is kind of hard. So it, my 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 list I think in uh, in this order is Zoe, the Grand Plaza, Ballistic Bot, Wiggly Burblefish, Iterative Improvement. Uh, that's yeah. my five. Oh, we forgot one. Anyone remember what we forgot? And I, it actually might be better than everything but Zoe. Oh gosh! Oh, oh no! It. it sparkle and it fly. Sparkle fly. Oh, sparkle, sparkle, fly. sparkle fly is sparkle so good, good yeah. and like sparkle fly is people huge. have been. That's another one that people yeah. have been talking about nerfing for quite a while. Yeah, I think I'm leaving. which is not unreasonable given that just a new Kinku life blade. Unnerf Kinku life blade. Yeah. It'll be much better. It'll be yeah. fun. The card, a three two. That like, card could be a three, three three right now, and I okay, it was he played a three three, but it's like close to not even seeing play as just any a four drop creature that doesn't draw a card is like not that good. Yeah. It's also, compare Kinku life blade to Zap Spray Finn. Zap Spray Finn. Gives you a mana and draws you a card, and King Life Blade has Life Link. Yikes! Yeah, yeah yikes! Yeah. All right. Um, do you guys want to give top five lists real quick too? But it's pretty hard. No, that's, yeah, that's it's pretty, pretty much hard. It. Yeah, yeah, it's quite hard. There's a lot of cards from the Cosmic Creations expansion. That Honestly, have been really uh, you. Relevant I was sweet. struggling to remember cards from the expansion, and then I like thank you for saying what they were because I just couldn't. <laughs> you just were yeah. blanking on like, it. And like, it's a little disappointing because Victor and three of his support cards, like the one that makes a random. Uh, Thing, and then the all basically all the non ballistic bot. Oh gosh, what's Guys, the mechanic called? The where the, they pump themselves a two or augment. A, augment. augment. All the uh, non ballistic bot augment cards are just like not that impressive. Although there were some co cool Niandroid decks. I thought around. Niandroid would be better than it was. Regardless, so I think let's move on. Old Man Sands asks: On a scale of one to ten, how much did you underestimate Wiggly Burblefish and why? Uh, I guess I'll start probably like seven or eight. <laughs> like I really underestimated it. You're you're not just gonna fire off ten for you? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna fire off ten. I never. The actual card, Wiggly Burblefish, probably like a seven or eight. The Wiggly Burblefish deck, ten. Probably probably like a ten. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, the that's actual fair. card, Wiggly Burblefish, probably probably like a seven. I'll accept that. I think you're closer to like an eight, but sure, we'll call it eight. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I think I'm at like a six or a seven. Okay, because yeah, that's I, fair. I I was I was think I think I was the biggest holdout. I'm like, wait a second, no, this card could be like kind of good but yeah. i still thought it was like i still came down on it being like kind of bad but still probably uh good in the deck that it's good in but that's kind of a the stars answer. have really aligned for this card because it has one toughness that is not very many um and you know even at zero mana like if it's all getting picked up by a withering whale still not good all right so on a similar vein uh lee mccleod asks Will you issue a written apology to the Wiggly Burblefish himself? I'll, I, I'm actually in personal contact with him already. I got his address. I sent the email. We've we've come to terms. Uh, you know what said was said in the past, and we're both being adults about it and moving <laughs> forward personally. So uh, he would like to know can, why can... you've only played two games of the deck. Alex. Well, I've played like ten. Mm, okay, at I've played at least ten for sure. At least rookie 10. numbers, but okay. Well, well, they are rookie numbers because I was playing Anivia. We we got we've established this. I, I had way more fun playing my two games of Anivia than you did your fifty games in the same amount of time. I'm sure. Are you in Masters yet? Yeah. Oh, when did that happen? Like a, way before any of you guys. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I just don't remember you mentioning it. If I didn't, if I didn't care about being uh, very present for this episode, I probably could have gotten to Masters while we were recording. Would have been funny. All right. So. <laughs> From Lee McLeod, in a serious note, he asks, Aphelius comes out next week. 
Do you have a champion in mind that you want to pair with Aphelios and try out? Go, Hugh. Not Diana. Not Diana. Why Bang. not? <laughs> just, just, just don't like Diana. It's not. It's. I actually do like Diana. It's just like in my mind, I'm thinking about like it's so. It's it's too obvious and like I just Diana too obvious. It, one, it's too obvious, and two, like I want to play. It's mostly just too obvious. I want to like, play Diana more than I want to play Nocturne with it for sure. Yeah, but I really don't want to play Nocturne. Yeah, I either. really don't want to play Nocturne with it. I want to do something. I have, honestly have no idea what I want to do with all that right, card. You, actually, I've got I've got a couple predictions for what I think the best one will be, but I the one that I most want to play with it is Zoe. All right, that's that's my answer for okay. sure. Okay. How about you, Noble? Twisted Fate. That's a good answer, too. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> what if Purplefish was in this oh, deck, too? Wait, the Purplefish TF spells. Aphelios deck? Hello. He makes spells. If you're casting a bunch of spells at turns, you're always going to trigger your Aphelios. Like, I know that they're two mana, but that's probably fine. Well, I mean, and you could put all these zero, the chief ones in, too. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. You don't could get to work. play Piltover and Zon, but it could be sick. It could work. Uh... I'm going to hard disagree with hard, that. I don't... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It could work, but it probably won't. I, uh, I mean, I, I, he's probably right, to be honest. So just... Uh, just That's where I stand on that one. Um, yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> the Twisted uh, Fate Zoe is a real version of the Burblefish deck, and you could just play Aphelios instead, but it's probably not better than Zoe. So, Cloud Aisha asks, Do you believe that the Rune Terra meta is fully figured out? Do you think that there could be good decks lying under the surface that people haven't discovered yet? Or that some cards could be hidden gems that people just haven't yet learned how to utilize? We've touched on this a little bit, but I, I think, like, yeah, definitely. Like, meta is definitely not fully figured out, especially with the new shakeup in the last 48 hours or whatever. Yes. Uh, Draven was an aggro card for a while. Now he's a mid range card. There's like, always room for improvement. Now he's, a mid -range in the meta. And he's an aggro card and a mid range value card. Like, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, Swain, Gangplank, Sejuani, all of these were champions that were, even though they're not great now, were very underestimated for a long time. Ash, very underestimated for a long time. And then you just need to find a home. Prominence, yeah. Um, it took a while for Zoe to be able to find a home, really, yeah. as well. Like, yep. there is always new stuff to be done in the meta in, in basically every game. I've yet to see a game that has changes that has not had consistent meta updates very regularly. I no. think that's especially true in this game. Yeah, and I think um, uh, the last point I want to make about this question is that uh, I think, I said it a little earlier, but I want to just reiterate that I think that with, I think people with the discovery of this deck are going to start noticing, are going to start trying build to build more synergy-based decks instead of, because up until this point, a lot of these decks, at least in my opinion, have been some conglomeration of cards that you look at and you think that's a good card absolutely on an individual level you think to yourself i want to put that card in my deck and i want to put that card in my deck those are both good cards this is now a pile yeah, of what cards champion that are does good. this level up or exactly. like how do i level up this champion or whatever and people and... have been and people have just sort of been putting a pile of very good good cards together and playing the deck and they've the decks have been good yeah fizz twisted fate is just a really good example of cards that weren't like meant they weren't batched together they weren't meant to look together like you look at all the elites and you're like there's some elite synergy so you play it together you look at all the frostbite spells and they all just save frostbite on them so you put them in the same deck like ezreal draven tf go hard and this deck are and fizz tf are all examples of like they weren't they were designed over they, all these cards came out in set like we have ballistic bot and we have rummage we have you know fizz and tf which were from a middle set like there's a very wide spread of where cards were printed here. And this just happens as card games gets older. It's a thing in Magic. Modern decks are very different from standard decks. There are cards that are bad in Modern, the larger format, or bad in Standard because they don't have the support that are good in Modern, the larger format. So, like, once you have more pieces to work with, it gets more interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, that was our last listener question for today. Oh, uh, was it really? It was, yeah. Huh. I want to thank everyone for listening. If we have any outros we want to do real quick, uh, let's go ahead. Noble, you have anything you want to yeah. say before we finish out? Uh, embrace the burble. Uh, I'm going to play all the Twisted Fate decks so you don't have to. You can check out that article probably. Hopefully if, it'll be out by Thursday. So by the it time should you're be in the description this. for this video. Yeah. Wherever you're listening to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hugh? Oh, um, I hope to see 
uh, people who are better at deck building than me create more interesting, more diverse decks uh, by looking closer at what cards can do together than individually. Awesome. And I think that that rounds out our episode for today. So thank you, as per usual, to everyone for sticking through the whole thing. If you are not a part of our Discord yet, please join the Discord. The link is in the description to whatever platform you are listening to this. Oh, and Follow have- us on Twitter. I just wanted to say that I love the people in our Discord so much. Like Discord's It's been my fa- become my favorite part of creating content. It's just like the Discord is popping at all yeah. times. We had all of these questions within 10 minutes of posting them. Like It's just so awesome to yeah, interact with all awesome. of y'all. We appreciate you. Yeah, and the uh, fact that someone like the Discord notification so and so has joined the Discord cord and someone it does someone in our Discord says welcome. That every isn't time. us. It's like every awesome. time, it's great. Yeah, yeah. So Discord is is Discord's going so well. Thank you so much, guys, for all of that. And uh, I think the oh check out Noble's article that'll be in the description below this as well. Make sure you guys look into that. He'll probably have, on Reddit. Yeah, he'll have everything that you need to know about Wiggly Burblefish in a full written out summary. So check that out. And we will see you guys in the next episode of Champ Select.